I believe the negative headline of Disney Plus subscribers coming in lighter than expected, 146.1 million uh, subscribers might be one reason the stock is not reacting positively. What's driving that? Yeah, so we did expect this drop off in subscribers and a lot of it can be attributed to their business at India, which is Hotstar, which actually lost a key piece of content, which is, you know, the Indian Premier League cricketing content, uh, which has now gone to Reliance. So that is actually causing, that caused almost two, 12 and a half million subscriber losses way, way over, I think, what the street was expecting. But one thing that you have to remember is, you know, India was not a high ARP or a high revenue base. Hmm. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily affect the profitability picture of the company uh, or of that streaming business. In fact, streaming losses actually came in much lower than expected. So I think that's actually good news. Uh, I am curious. We'll talk a little bit about like how they managed to do that, uh, Geetha. Yeah, so, you know, the streaming losses, they were projecting actually a sequential increase of about 100 million from the prior quarter. I think what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, content costs obviously are coming down. There is a there is an effort uh, for content cost rationalization across the industry and definitely at Disney. Remember, they do have a five and a half billion cost savings program that is in progress. But you also have the writer strikes that are contributing to, you know, some cost savings across the board. So I think it's, it's a combination of those two as well as, of course, lower content costs for, you know, the hot star business as well. Uh, when we talk about the charge that they took, uh, what they said was content removal, I was going back to, uh, I guess, the filing that they had back in June where they talked about some of these underperforming shows like the Jeff Goldblum show and the Turner and Hooch and a few others here. Uh, and these are underperforming shows. And by removing them, that makes the costs situation better. Just explain to me why they take that charge and why removing those shows from uh, their programming lineup is actually a net benefit to them financially. Yeah, it's a one-time charge, but it actually helps them in their overall cost, uh, you know, cost picture. Because if you just look at Disney, they are spending about 30, 31 billion dollars in content costs every year. This basically tells them, okay, these are underperforming titles. We take that, they reduce, they get to reduce that content charge now on an ongoing basis, and it basically improves their profitability. So yes, it's one-time pain, but then the the, the you know the benefits kind of spill out uh, over a multi-year period. The other thing that they spoke about was with those underperforming titles they said that maybe these titles are not performing well on Disney plus but maybe we could license them out ah. to, to you know third parties like like a, maybe a, a Warner or a Netflix where they could probably play better 